Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Linda and Barbara, for inviting me. And uh, thanks for being here. Uh, first off is chronic Lyme disease. We really believe that a whole system approach is the only way to address this very complicated, often elusive condition. Perhaps a better title for the disease would be multiple chronic infectious disease syndrome. Since, as we know, it encompasses many other infectious diseases. You may have this flyer, and I'm not going to go over that. But first off, what I'd like to discuss is the conventional model of treatment and what we do as opposed to that. Conventional model of treatment typically addresses one symptom, and it uses one modality of treatment. You have an infection, you get one antibiotic, and you're done. Now, this works very well. As an ER doc, I do reductionist conventional model of treatment for many conditions. You got a broken bone, guess what? I, I put it back together, put a splint or a cast on it, and we're done. You have a heart attack and a blocked artery, I look to open up that artery. Single intervention, single symptom. Alternative medicine typically is in lieu of mainstream medicine. It tends to be out of the box. <clears throat> it tends to be of less rigorous scientific methods. We actually, in the integrative community, would like not to use that, although we do use some alternative methods. Complementary medicine uses single interventions that add on to conventional therapies. You have a chronic condition, and you get a massage. They're not integrated. They're separated. Integrative medicine looks to combine in a comprehensive way a multidisciplinary intervention, a whole system model with prescription strategies and treatment strategies that are individuals to you as the patient or client. It is based on an objective assessment of who you are. We look to add as a life-affirming interaction between you and us. And that is what we think integrative medicine is, and we believe it is. So this is really what we believe is the best method for treatment. And as you see, all the spheres are equal in size because we believe they are equal in importance. The first off is who you are. What is your story, your biography? You are not just a Lyme patient. You are a mother, a daughter, a sister. You have children that you care for, and by the way, you love photography. That is a part of your makeup, and we believe that that is significant for understanding you along with these other objectives. What is your diet and lifestyle, and how can we, in the integrative model, use that and use food and exercise as medicine. When we look at you, we now also want to look at the biology of you as an individual. They are not separate from you. They are with you. And we will look at as many of those factors as possible so that we get enough information. 
And then what is your pathology? What is your disease? And then how can we best treat that? Before I was ill, I worked as an accountant. I liked my job. I was good at it. I welcomed caring for my children and looked forward to the times of joy and engagement with my friends and family. Now it is impossible for me to get out of bed. I am so tired. I can't think straight. My sleep is turbulent, having severe headaches, dizziness, and body aches. My vision is impaired. These symptoms come and go, and I never know when it may come. My arms and legs hurt all the time, migrating from one joint to the next, and I cry without reason. I don't know who I am. I'm scared. When will I feel better? Please just tell me I will. Now, this is not a unique story. You have heard this, and maybe some of you have felt this. This and my colleagues, and I want to say that I am speaking here as Ron Stram, but I am coming from my colleagues Jennifer Enos and Corey DeRoma, because together we believe actually we create a better fabric, a better blanket for you. And our other colleagues, uh, Chris Riley and Rebecca Rice, our traditional Chinese medicine providers, acupuncturists, will also be joining us, hopefully for the questioning. So you've seen these pictures. This one's really small. That's the nymph. It's very hard to find on you. The tick is a really smart little bugger. It injects an anesthetic in you so you actually can't feel it. So to say that I don't get tick bites, you may not look. It's very difficult. They tend to crawl in areas of creases and spaces. And so what do you do when you get one? Well, unless you don't go outdoors, and unless you don't have animals, the likelihood is you will get bit. My recommendation is in uh, drugstores, they have little tweezer-like things that can pull them out right away, remove as quick as possible. If it's an unknown duration greater than 6 to 12 hours of engorgement, I recommend treatment. Typical treatment that may be suggested would be one dose of a 200 milligram doxycycline. And I will actually address that as a recommendation, which I believe is not effective. We actually recommend this dosing. It's about a month of treatment. Typically, it's two drugs, because you may be either addressing the different life cycles of the Borrelia bacteria, or you may be addressing some of the co-infections as well. What about this year? It's going to be a bad one. This is probably going to be the worst tick-borne disease infections that we will have seen. Because of the temperature and the fact that there has been such a warm winter, the life cycle for typical trees has changed. So acorns, if you go hiking, you'll find there's not a lot of acorns to step on. Guess what? That means the deer and the mice don't have a lot of food to eat, where that's typical in the forests. So they start coming out into your yards. So the potential for tick exposure is significantly greater. Chronic Lyme disease affects about 200,000 people per year. New York State has the highest number of people reporting Lyme infection. And this is actually only 10 to 12% of the reported numbers. 
because actually the CDC became overwhelmed with how many reported cases there were. So it stopped actually reporting. We used to get labs that if they were positive, we had to report to the CDC. They don't do that anymore because it's overwhelmed. 94% of Lyme actually only comes from 12 states. Unfortunately, this area and the surrounding areas are some of the highest. For chronic Lyme disease symptoms, multiple chronic infectious disease syndrome, it typically takes seeing nine physicians until you get a diagnosis. That's 150,000 people. So unless you have a typical presentation, I know I got bit, I have a rash, I have the bullseye, your percentage of being diagnosed at your first visit by your physician is somewhere around 2%. Now, I don't know, but any of you have been told it's in your head? Any of you been told that you've got depression and you get medication and you don't feel any better? And 80% of you are told simply, I don't know what it is. It doesn't really fit. You know, you got a little positive with your ANA, which is a rheumatoid factor, maybe some Schrogen syndrome, but then it goes away, so I'm not sure if you have that. So I just want to tell you, in medical school, you're taught that 80 to 85 percent of your ability to make a diagnosis is on the history. That you, by me listening, will give me the diagnosis. That has not changed. And that typically, it's when we don't listen as providers that we don't get the diagnosis. In 2004, the California Lyme Disease Association, the government spent 18 times more funding on West Nile virus than it did on Lyme, despite Lyme disease being reported eight more times. The NIH budget for 2012, 25 million for 150,000 people versus 46 million for West Nile virus. The Center for Disease Control, 5 million in its 2012 budget versus 20 million for West Nile virus. Show of hands, how many of you know of anyone who's got West Nile virus? Huh? Huh? I don't know. So the first slide I said ticked off, right? Who are you or who in here is ticked off? So I really suggest to you that this has to be a movement. ACT UP was the movement for AIDS. Ticked off could be the movement for Lyme disease. This is not appropriate. With these many people infected and with the fact that this disease is only going to get worse, we need to make a stand. You need to make a stand. It's important. And that's how things get done. 